Hello, and welcome to the Michigan City Public Library podcast. My name is Miss Dana, and I will be your host. I work in youth services as a specialist, and my favorite books are YA fantasy and sci-fi. Feel free to reach out to me with questions, comments, concerns, or if you'd like to be a special guest at D W O L F at M C L I B dot O R G. All right, let's first talk about upcoming story times and events in youth services for November. The first week of November, the story time is about squirrels and tails. November 10th is hats and jackets. November 17th is bears and hibernation. And November 24th is Thanksgiving. Check out our website for the virtual storytime videos that go up every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And stop and use services for the new take-home crafts. We're also starting a new teen take-home craft every month. And we're going to have a book in a jar at the youth services desk for kids to come in, take a look at, guess the book. And if you guess right, you'll be entered in for a prize. In the community, there's also a few events for Halloween. On October 23rd, 24th, and the 31st, there's Boo at the Zoo at the Washington Park Zoo from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Thursday, October 28th, at Ames Field, there's howl o from 6.30 to 8 p.m. There's also Trick-or-Treat at the Scareport out at the LaPorte Municipal Airport on Saturday, October 23rd from 1 to 3 p.m. Moving on, I asked staff here what their favorite part of Halloween is, and I got a mixed bag of replies from I hate Halloween to it's my absolute favorite holiday. The most common answers were jack-o'-lanterns, pumpkin picking and carving, dressing up and seeing kids dress up, the fabulous Halloween decorations, and just fall in general. The weather, the apple picking, the cool breeze, and fall nights. My favorite part of Halloween is going to a pumpkin patch, carving a jack-o'-lantern, and then toasting the pumpkin seeds. Let us know what your favorite part of Halloween is, too. And if you're interested in roasting your own pumpkin seeds, here's a super easy and quick recipe. First, you'll want to collect your pumpkin seeds out of your pumpkins. I like to toss them into a big bowl with water already in it so that when you're done getting all the seeds out, you can easily just wash them and remove any pulp left on the seeds right there. Make sure to dry them really well if you like your pumpkin seeds to be crunchy. Then toss them with a little bit of olive oil and your seasonings of choice. I like to use salt, paprika, and loads of garlic powder, but you can add anything from red pepper flakes to even cinnamon. Then all that's left is to roast them at 350 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. Now let's talk about local haunts, as in places in Indiana that are supposedly haunted. Starting first with the Indiana State Dunes Park in Chesterton. Around 1915, that area was mostly wilderness, and stories often came from fishermen about a naked woman who would swim in the lake. She was said to be Alice Marble Gray, a hermit who lived along the beach. She was the daughter of a Chicago couple and was cultured and educated But a broken heart and worsening eyesight made it hard for her to work. She chose the life of a recluse instead. In 1920, a drifter named Paul Wilson moved in with Alice, but two years later, when a man's body was found on the beach, Wilson was suspected of the crime. He was let go, and he and Alice moved to Michigan City, where they sold handmade furniture. Alice died in 1925 and was supposedly killed by her husband. Legend has it that her ghostly form sometimes returns to the beach, 
running on the sand, or swimming in the lake. Right here in town, the Barker Mansion has been a hot spot of possible activity. Employees and visitors have reported seeing shadowy figures through the mansion, loud footsteps on the old servants' stairs, bone-chilling pockets of cold air, and an inexplicable bullet hole. Posey Chapel in Laporte is also supposed to be a haunted site. According to stories, over 150 years ago, the church burned down and its preacher hung himself from the tree near the gate. Now, folks say red eyes and a red light are seen here and in the woods. Orbs and the voice of a woman singing to guitar music have also been reported. There's also the Valparaiso University down in Valpo. At the alumni hall, two ghost children, around eight or nine, and wearing jogging pants, are known to run up and down the hallways at 2 a.m. According to some of the students, the ghosts have spoken to them and told them they were playing tag. And there's even a haunted library here in Indiana. About two hours south of here, in Attica, Indiana, their library is supposedly haunted. Built in 1905, the employees of this library have heard strange noises, including knocking, whistling, whispering, dragging sounds, and even the sounds of the toys in the children's area moving by themselves after closing. The employees have also mentioned seeing figures watching them or shadows darting around. They have said that activity increases if there are people there after closing time whether it's employees or patrons. And if that puts you in the mood for a spooky story, I've got a few to recommend from all over the library. First, for DVDs, we have, of course, Halloween, starring Jamie Lee Curtis and lots of the sequels and remakes. Carrie, starring Sissy Spacek and the remake with Chloe Grace Moritz. We also have... One of my favorites, Fright Night, the remake with Anton Yelnich, and we also do have the original as well. In youth DVDs, we have Dora's Halloween, The Halloween Dragon, a SpongeBob Halloween special, and many more. As for the books in the adult section, we have the newest from Stephen King titled Billy Summers. Billy Summers is a war vet sniper for hire who only takes jobs if the target is a truly bad person. He wants to retire, and this story follows his last job. Also in adults is A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins. This follows three women tied to a young man who was found brutally murdered in London. All three have secrets they want to cover up. Finally, in the adult section, we have The Third Grave by Lisa Jackson. This is fourth in the Savannah series following a crime writer and her detective husband working a cold case and hot on the trail of a killer whose work isn't done. From the young adult section, we have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This follows a girl who returns to her private school after her girlfriend died last year. She meets a mysterious writer, and the two of them team up to solve the mysteries of the deaths of the Dalloway witches on campus. We also have The Dead and the Dark by Courtney Gold. This thrilling debut is about the things that lurk in dark corners, the parts of you that can't remain hidden, and about finding home in places and people you don't expect. Finally, from YA, we have The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. We follow two best friends who decide to go on a three-day hike in the National Forest. Simmering tensions lead to a detour off the trail and straight into a waking nightmare, and then into something far worse, something that will test them in horrifying ways. In the juvenile fiction section, we have Hide and Don't Seek by Annika Moroz Rissi. This is a collection of short, spooky stories that will keep readers up past their bedtimes 
laughing, gasping, and looking over their shoulders to see what goes bump in the night. We also have Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. We follow Ollie after a personal tragedy in her life, and she uses books to escape. She encounters an old lady about to destroy a book and snatches it, and it changes her life forever. Lastly, in the J fiction section, and one of my personal favorites, City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Cassidy Blake's parents are popular writers who land a TV show about some of the world's most haunted places. Their first stop is Edinburgh, Scotland. What her parents don't know is that Cassidy can see and talk to ghosts. And finally, we have some picture books that are quite a bit less scary, but still great for a Halloween story. First, we have Gustavo the Shy Ghost by Flavia Z. Drago. This story is about finding the courage to make friends, and it has beautiful illustrations. We also have Hardly Haunted by Jessie Seema that stars a house who wants to be a home, even if her new family isn't what she expected. This is a story about staying true to yourself. And when you want to jam to some Halloween tunes, pick up Halloween Hustle by Charlotte Gunfison. Skeleton is dancing his way to a Halloween party, but as he grooves across town, he keeps stumbling, tumbling, and falling apart. Can Skeleton stay in one piece long enough to make it to the party? And finally, for picture books, we have Poultry Geist by Eric Garon. This is a wry take on why did the chicken cross the road that gives a whole new meaning to to get to the other side. Let us know some of your favorite Halloween books on all of our social media. This time of year is great for grabbing a book, curling up with a thick blanket, and burning autumn candles. Take time to have a cozy afternoon with a library book. And until the last page, thank you for listening. This is Miss Dana saying have a great Halloween and we'll see you at the library soon. Bye!